All right, what is going on guys? Mizoid here. Welcome to a special type of video today, guys. We are on Viper practice and basically I'm going to be doing a lot of commentary because that is what you guys voted for on my latest community tab about YouTube, my life and business in general and stuff like that. I'm going to touch up on a bunch of topics. So I hope you guys are ready for this video. If you are, be sure to leave a like down below. Basically what's going to happen is I recorded a bunch of fights with a bunch of tally members on Viper practice. By the way, Viper practice is going to get a huge revamp for the Christmas update. So stay tuned. I actually want to plan on uploading one practice video a week. So stay tuned for that in the future. Future. but anyways yeah guys viper practice is the place to be for this update and right now honestly so yeah background clips are basically going to be all tally member fights just me fighting people in tally i think we did chiche hate food bambi kraken and automatic i think those are the people i fought in the video um so you guys are going to see that you know it's low cuts it's just basically raw pvp clips but uh, yeah we're going to get right on into it so hope you guys enjoy if you do leave a like down below if you guys have any questions on stuff i say throughout this video go ahead and leave a comment down below i'll try my best to respond as many as possible and i hope you guys do enjoy i'll see you guys later peace all right, guys, so hopefully in the background of the video right now, you're seeing some type of PvP or something and some tally members. But yeah, like I said, guys, today's video is just going to be more of a commentary video. I haven't actually ever done this before. Right now, I'm on Audacity recording just MP3, so I can put this over. So I'm not too sure how my commentary style is going to be because usually I'm more occupied by something. But yeah, we're going to get right on into it. So basically, this video is about YouTube um how i was successful on youtube how i'd recommend other people to be successful on youtube in both hcf and in any genre uh but mainly hcf because that's what i'm experiencing obviously all right so i guess i'm not too sure if this video is going to get out there in the communities of other mc communities where like people don't know who i am or anything but if you guys don't know who i am uh, my name is colby i've been doing youtube for about four years now maybe five years when this is coming out honestly time has been going by so fast since i started so i don't know where i'm at but uh, me starting YouTube, basically I'll give some background just so everyone knows my story, I guess. I used to always make videos back in the day, like all the time. If anyone's watched Pyronic Documentary, which is uh, my esports organization, I talked about this a little bit, but I used to make videos like all the time with other stuff. Like I used to play soccer, that was like my life back then. So I would make videos of me unboxing cleats and like literally just kicking a ball into a net. I would make videos about that and like testing cleats and stuff like that. But uh, even even past that, it got to gaming eventually. Like I used to play a game called RuneScape. I'm sure a lot of you guys know what that game is if you're probably on the older side. Um, it was an old game that I used to play way back in the day, and I honestly played it for years, like years on years. And I eventually made videos with that too. What I'd do is I'd, like I installed Bandicam, and I would make videos like typing to people. I wouldn't actually commentate. That's actually why. Fun fact: if you go to some of my first channel or first videos on this channel, my first ever HDF Let's Plays, the first two or something. You will not hear my voice because I purposely cut out my microphone. I was so insecure about my voice and how high it was compared to everyone else around my age that I uh, I cut it out of all my videos because I didn't want to get hate for being a squeaker, as they would say. But um, yeah, so that that's just a fun fact. So yeah, I used to record videos, record videos on gaming, IRL, all the time back in the day. So that's why... I was always ready to record. I always had Sony Vegas on deck. I always had even Windows Movie Media Maker. I think that's what it's called. Um, I used OBS. I used Fraps. I used Action. I used Bandicam. I used like all those at least one time in my life. So um, eventually I switched to OBS. Obviously, it's a superior thing. But I used to use Action way back in the day when I first started HDF YouTube. So um, yeah, I started YouTube. I mean, I always had the ability to make videos, but I was never consistent. So I'll get into that later. But what started me in YouTube was I was playing a HCF map, one of my first uh, couple with my friend Pinke. This is also with Kraken, Septical, Reframe. I think I'm probably missing someone, but basically those are the main people. I hope I'm not missing someone. I feel, I'm sorry if I did, but those are like the main people I remember. Me, Pinke, Septical, Kraken, Reframe. Um, we were in our own faction. We went raidable. Um, and we got, so this is, this is a funny story. I don't think I've ever told this before, but back in the day, uh, on my HQ, we went raidable, but got rolled back and we duped our vows like three times, like over and over. Um, and by, cause we kind of tricked staff to dupe our vows. And yeah, that's something I don't think I've ever said, but we did that and we had like a row of diamond blocks on my HQ, which is something that's like almost impossible to get on my HQ. That was like a big thing. So we had that. Septical was friends with Painful PVP. Some of you guys may know him. And we ended up getting Septical to talk to Painful after we went raidable and we merged with them. So this is, this is actually after one of my videos that I made called Painful PVP Hackusates Me. I think I actually, I might've taken down the video because I, I don't know if I have it up. Let me actually go check. 
Yeah, so I actually did take down the video. I'm looking at it right now. It's unlisted. I uploaded it at March 31st, 2016. It is a seven minute video and it has 61,000 views. So this video um, was made when I was just a random player on HTF and basically I 1v1 painful or I was like fighting him on his base and he hacked me in his let's play. And I made a whole video dedicated to it about how he hacked me because I was, I mean, I was young back then. I was about 14 years old. It's looking like I was 14 back then. And yeah, I, I basically, when when he hacks into me as such a big YouTuber, one of the biggest in the community, I made a, a very stupid video, basically not really mocking him, um, but basically just about it happening. Cause I, like, even today, I know, I know that if I hacked someone and they made a video and got 60,000 views on it, I would be kind of like, just like, why? I'd be like, why, bro? But because I hack people all the time and it's really not that big of a deal. But for some reason, this video blew up. I got a bunch of subs off of it, a bunch of views. And that like kind of kickstarted me, I'd say. Um, and then it got, it was funny because then I joined his faction and we had like that little, he knew that I uploaded the video. Um, I would always talk trash and chat. I was pretty, I was pretty toxic little kid back then. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I honestly apologize because I feel bad because the amount of toxicity I deal with in this community from people that were like me, it's just so annoying. Like I, I feel what it's like. So I apologize for ever being like that. And I'm sure anyone that's toxic in this community right now will one day grow up to like think that as well. But yeah, this is all, this is a whole backstory. Started uploading when I joined his video or his faction. That's what motivated me to start uploading consistently. I think I started like every other day and I just kept going, kept going, kept uploading. You can, like I said, the first couple of videos, I cut out my mic um, and then I finally did it. Like my very first video on the channel, I think is like a really cool one. This is actually before I joined Painful's faction, I believe. And it actually started up my my base rating career. Like I literally went into a base and took a 4v1 on mine HQ and killed them all. So you guys should probably go see that. It's literally called like 4v1 on enemy base results in three kills or something. So that's that's cool. But my voice isn't in that. A lot of people think my voice is, but it's actually Pinke that's talking. But yeah, regardless, let's move on. So yeah, um, I started uploading. Then the whole Ziggy got blacklisted thing. That's a whole long story. We're not gonna get into that. That's a whole thing for another day. But when that happened, me and Chase went to Viper and we joined the faction together and we started invis rating we brought back invis rating and made it mainstream and uh we've been uploading ever since literally ever since i mean chase took a break for a couple years when he moved to la but um he's back and i never stopped so that's where we're at that's how i started youtube but there's a couple things i want to talk about specifically in what actually led to my success on youtube in the hf community um if you even call it success but yeah so consistency and quality this is the thing that I need to emphasize to almost everybody, uh, as well as uniqueness. So what was unique about me and what actually led to my growth was the fact that one, I was so young and I was pretty good. Um, and also the fact that I clicked six CPS. I think that was super unique. Uh, nobody else really did that in the community other than Potfast, uh, at least like YouTuber wise. Potfast was the only other known YouTuber that clicked six CPS in my opinion. Like I don't, I might be speaking, but, uh, like I, that's what I remember. I remember it was just me and Pop Fast. So, um, and then also being pretty good at the game uh, from with 60 PS was pretty unique. So that that gave me some recognition. Being young gave me recognition because you know being young and good is pretty good. And then also the fact that um, we kind of brought back invis rating and made it our thing. Me and Chase and our faction tally uh, that basically became our thing, and people could only find it on our channels. Uh, base rating in general was very not common. That was just. I would say that we were one of the first people to actually make that mainstream. And I wouldn't take full credit for making base rating mainstream. But what I do think is that base rating, like videos dedicated to running into people's bases, I would say were popularized by me and Chase. And nowadays it's almost what every YouTuber does other than trapping. So it, it, it's a very big part of HDF now. Um, back then I would say YouTubers were mainly focused on like, um, not pop PVP, but like team fights and like let's plays, but I don't think people necessarily base rated. I don't even know what people did back then. Like I, it's hard to remember. Like I remember when I played with painful, we just like did like end trips over and over, um, coughs, but we never really base rated. That was like a thing that only I did and tally and me and chase did. But I mean, if you guys disagree with that, that's okay. That's just what I think. I'm not trying to, you know, have like an ego about like that. We popularized base rating or anything, but what I remember is the fact that nobody really did it, and that's why it was so unique and why we were able to succeed with that style of base rating and video making. But uh, yeah, um, uniqueness, consistency, quality. So let me speak on consistency. I started off 
pretty inconsistent uploading randomly. But then I got on the every other day schedule. Me and Chase were doing like every other day. But then I really ramped it up. I really ramped it up and I did daily. And I've been doing daily ever since I started that decision. Um, there's only been a few times I've missed uploads and it's not voluntarily. It was always because I was traveling or, and I got back from a trip or I was about to leave for a trip or I didn't finish pre-recording. It was never voluntary. If I am home and I know I'm going to miss an upload, that basically never happens because I feel guilty to like the fan base that I've already generated that they're expecting an upload that day. I feel guilty if I don't actually get that video out. So that's just what it is now. But consistency, guys, that is super important. If you want to succeed on YouTube, you need to be consistent. If you create a schedule, your fans will subconsciously start to adapt to your schedule and you will find them being on your videos more and more and more. And if you think that uploading daily, which I actually have talked to a YouTuber about this before in the past, Sizzlers, he used to upload, I think a little irregularly and like every other day or every three days or something. And I told him you start daily uploading. Like even though you might see your daily views go down, your total views will always be higher. And this actually affected me when I did double uploading. I double uploaded every day. I had a period of time, I think three months straight, where I uploaded two videos every single day or basically every single day. And um, I did that with HEF Faction Skyblock Prison when I was doing all of those at once. And yeah, consistency, that matters. Uh, the more uploads, the better. That's just how it is. It'll always be like that. Even though individual uploads or individual views go down, total views go up. If total views go up, then your subscribers retention, uh, potential to find new fans, potential to gain more subs, likes, comments is all going to increase. The more videos, the more views that's going to happen. Even though on the outside perspective it might be like, oh, this guy only averages this many views now, but it actually realistically, you're getting more views over time. Uh, you're having more videos on your channel to get views over time as well. Like my channel has over 1,500 videos, I think. So like every day, if just one of my, if every single videos of those got viewed once, like that's 1,500 times in one day. So having more videos to get viewed at once will increase your total views, increase algorithms, you know, all that type of stuff. So my opinion, I would always recommend daily uploads if you can do it. If you can do it, that will benefit you significantly if you want to make YouTube a real, like a, just a real career, not career, but hobby that can actually be turned into something more than just a hobby like it is for me. But yeah, when I say daily uploads, I do not mean just daily uploads, okay? I also mentioned quality. Quality is a very broad term, but it is extremely important. You can't just have bad videos that you upload every day. You can't have two minute videos that you upload every day. You need to have some type of consistency in terms of video length or at least a minimum requirement. For me, it's always been 10 minutes. I never upload an HF Let's Play under 10 minutes unless once again, something bad, like I'm traveling, I'm about to travel. Uh, I can't get a video done for some reason, but I don't think I've ever done that anytime like recent at all. But yeah, so it's gotta be quality. If you have quality everyday videos, there is almost no way possible that you cannot grow eventually. How can you have, like, I've never seen a channel with, let's just honest, like 30, 60 HDF videos that are stayed consistent, uploaded on the same time every day, daily uploads, all high quality videos, not go anywhere. There's no YouTuber that is doing that right now that is not currently growing. I'm seeing some YouTubers making some great moves right now. Honestly, shout out to Caster and Flusha Aimlock. These two YouTubers right now have caught my eye specifically because they, they are doing, they're, they're doing exceptionally well for their size. Like Caster, um, we actually invited him to the Tally Versus series. He's been uploading daily. He looks like he's uploading daily uh, right now, which is really, really good. And these are quality videos. I, I can tell you they are quality videos. Flusha Aimlock as well. Uh, he was also in the Tally Versus series. He has just under a thousand subscribers and he's been uploading. It looks like a little, not every day, uh, every other day as well as some more. It's, it's a little inconsistent, but it is like it is good. It's like consistent in, on a grand scale, but when it comes down to the weekly things, I don't actually know if he has a schedule or anything. So I, saw, I apologize if he does have a schedule and I'm missing it, but uh, this last one was nine hours ago. This one was two days ago. This one was four days ago. This one's five days ago, six days ago. So you guys know what I mean. Um, consistent in that aspect on like the grand scheme consistency is good, but when you consistent, like when you're consistent on the short scale, that is even better. But like I said, both are great. And I just want to say right now, before I continue guys, this is already getting to the 13 minute mark of me talking. And I can already tell that like I have so much more to talk about. So this might be a really long video and I'm probably not going to cut up my audio at all. I just want to keep it all fresh. And what I'm saying is going to basically stay. So yeah, shout out to them for doing well. But yeah, like I'm saying, if you upload quality videos consistently, then there's almost no way you can't succeed eventually. That's just not possible. Like you can't just upload good videos and go unnoticed forever. That's not going to happen. Sure, it's demotivating if it takes longer, but that'll never happen. So I assure you, if you do it right, quality and consistency, 
then it'll work. Um, something when when I say quality, I mean two things. One that the content is actually good. It's not forced content. It's not bad content. Um, it's not boring content. So that means like something that you actually find enjoyment in, I would recommend because if you enjoy it, then you, it's going to reflect in your commentary. It's going to reflect in the effort that you actually make in the videos and it's going to reflect in your editing. So as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, then you're good. That's why I always base rate basically almost no matter what series I'm doing, I always have at least some base rating because that's, that's what I enjoy the most. Uh, I, I find that like hype. I never find a moment in HDF that's better than base rating in my opinion, other than like Sometimes team fighting can get up there, but it's a little hard to do that. But yeah, that's besides the point. Um, if you're enjoying it, it's going to be high quality. And then something that also super important that not a lot of people actually understand how important it is. If you have good renders, guys, that's going to make you stand out over anyone else. That is something that also made me unique. I always had really good renders compared to like a lot of other people in HDF. And that stuck for, for a while. Like people that have good renders, guys, uh, super important. So super important. Renders, recording settings, those are very important. I'll probably actually release mine again soon. They might be released on someone else's channel. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I will eventually do that. But yeah, quality, consistency. And then last but not least, if you can add in this third element of being unique, you are bound for success in my eyes. If you have your own unique feature, which at the time was base rating. Imagine base rating being unique. That's just not going to happen anymore. So I don't know what you guys want to find. There's not really a new, there's not really a video style to be unique anymore. Or sorry there's not a content style that can be unique anymore. Like the, everything's already been done in HCF. Um, but the things that haven't been done is editing styles, uh, commentary styles, actual video styles, but the content itself is basically everyone's done at least one thing. I'd say, I mean, there are some things that are new, like you can do series ideas, you can do challenges. Those are all cool, but I'm, I'm talking big things like base rating, team fighting, trapping, Coths, those have all been like focused on and done. I actually don't don't think there's a YouTuber that focuses on Coths, so that'd be cool. I'm not sure how successful that'd be. Just an idea throwing that out there, but I don't think there's any YouTuber that specializes in doing King of the Hills. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's what I, that's what I'm saying, guys. If you can specialize uh, quality, consistency, and uniqueness, there is no way you will fail. I'm just saying that there's just no possible way you will go unnoticed for a long time. Like it's just not possible. I don't see how it could be possible in, the, in an HDF, especially a small community like this. Eventually you will be noticed, whether it's by your peers or by other players or by media teams or servers and uh, servers, servers noticing you. I need to get into that as well down the line, but I'm just, I'm honestly just going off on a tangent on about everything I'm saying. But you guys get the point. Quality, consistency, and uniqueness, and you will grow. Whether it's uniqueness in your content or who you are as a person or your commentary style, that matters significantly. All right, guys? So just remember those three things. Uh, you know, Try to tie it into your own life, how you could make your own consistent content. I would recommend always, recommend always daily uploads. That is the most significant way of growing fast. Um, quality, but, but you can't force yourself to do daily. If it's not quality, then don't do daily. Do every other day. If you can't get quality every day, then do every other day. And if you can't do every other day, do every three days. But if you can do daily and actually make it good, then do it. Do it hundred percent. And then uniqueness, that's not something you incorporate into every video. That's something that you are, you are just unique in your own way. Everyone's unique in their own way. So you don't have to worry about that. Even if you don't see anything unique in yourself, other people will see things unique in yourself. Like I didn't see six CPS is unique. I didn't see my voice as unique, but, um, and I didn't even see base rating as unique, but it eventually it, it pointed out that it was pretty unique. So you guys need to, you know, remember that and you'll be unique in your own way. All right, so now that I've gone over basically what it's taken or what it takes to actually be successful on YouTube in my eyes, I also want to talk specifically about what it actually takes in your life to be successful on YouTube like this. For me, it's it took me a long time, guys. It took me years and hours every single day. So this isn't like, yeah, people do YouTube as a hobby, um, but people also turn YouTube into something more than a hobby. That is what I did, and it, it, I'm not trying to sound self-centered or anything, but it, it took a lot of work. It took an extreme amount of work. I've uploaded, like I said, over 1,500 videos. I don't think there's anyone else in this community that's uploaded more videos than me. I might be wrong. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm guessing that's what it's like. I've been uploading daily for almost four years straight. And you can imagine the toll that takes on my life outside of the game. Um, I basically didn't have one outside of the game. I mean, I'm not ashamed to say that. I don't regret what I did. I think my life is in a, I'm in a great point in my life for my age that uh, I'm very happy about. And the people that are around me these days are some of my best friends. So that, that is great. And that's just how it is. Uh, for you to be able to do YouTube every single day, 
I will applaud you. And it's very hard to do that. Like not everyone can do it. Some people don't even have the situation to be able to spend that much time on a computer every day. And I completely understand that. So like I said, if you do want to do something like that, you have to actually be able to dedicate the time and make sacrifices in that aspect. Like my, my whole high school, um, when I, I basically started in like sophomore year, I think the start of sophomore year, like the end of freshman year. And from sophomore year and on, I was just like, I was just only YouTube. That was my entire life. I would go to school, I would come home and I would immediately go on my computer. Uh, I think after I did homework or I do homework throughout the night or something and I would make a video, get the video done, render, and I would stay up until my homework was done. So it was safe to say I got very little sleep throughout my high school, but I honestly look back on that now and it wasn't that bad. I mean, I mean, it, it, it was pretty bad, but when I was doing it like every single day, I didn't really notice how much time I was actually, you know, not sleeping and all that type of stuff. Cause I was so, I was so focused on moving up on the ladder, like continuing and growing and succeeding that it never really occurred to me how much time I was actually spending. I actually didn't really realize until the end of senior year, how fast high school passed me by and how I wasn't actually involved with almost anything uh, outside of YouTube and outside of school. It was basically it. I, I, I did pretty well in school. Uh, I think some people might know that. I'm about to get into a very big part of this as well. So I'm actually just going to give some context. Um, like I said, I did okay in school, pretty decent. I took about seven AP classes uh, on like the 100 weighted GPA scale. I think I had like a 98 GPA. Um, I don't know if you guys use that scale or just use 4.0s, but I believe that's above 4.0. Um, and then I had a 34 on my ACT and then like I got like a perfect score on the math SAT subject test for math two or whatever. So like I said, I only said that because I don't want you guys to think I'm a stupid kid that didn't go to college. I I had a really good uh, experience in school when it came to like, you know, how I did. But um, I'd say school really only taught me time management and dedication and perseverance, really. That's all it really did. It, I, all the skills I really learned in school, none of it's useful today other than math. That's like the only thing I've actually remembered. And the only thing that I did learn, like chemistry and all that type of stuff, I, it's only useful when I help other people with their homework. That's like the only time it's ever useful. So it's not really a thing that I I hold today. The, the things I learned in school, I don't hold. And I, I didn't take like, um, I think there's, I don't know what the class is called, but I didn't, I didn't take any like financial classes. I didn't take any business things in my high school. My high school didn't offer that. But um, I was very privileged by my principal. I explained to him what I did on YouTube my senior year. And he allowed me to actually cut half of my classes, my schedule. So I only had two classes every day. And the other two half of the, like the other half of the day was basically I was allowed to go home and do YouTube as my senior internship. And I just had to tell him about it. He was a super, super cool guy. Um, in case any of you guys have graduated, you know how when you get like the tassel for your graduation, I gave him mine because uh, without him, I would not have been able to experience my full potential of like basically spending hours and hours every day actually like turning this into more than just a hobby. So without him, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, he really helped me. Even though it was just a couple months of school, I think it was like the second half of senior year, he really changed how I was able to do things because he, he gave me so much freedom and I will always be grateful for that. But yeah, that's basically what I'm talking about for school. So like, like I said, I was not, I was not like a slacker in school. I didn't just like, I didn't just do school, fail it and then go home and play Minecraft. I, I did both at the same time pretty well. And um, when it came to the point that I didn't go to college, that was a big thing for me because why would I waste my time or waste my effort doing so good in school or trying to do good in school to appear good for colleges and not go to college? So I did apply to colleges. Um, I was going to go to Northeastern. I got accepted in Northeastern and I was going to go there, but I actually didn't. I just decided not to. I decided I was just going to focus on my own stuff. I was doing, I was doing really well for myself based on what I did. And I just focus on that. So guys, I'm really getting off topic here. This is supposed to be a YouTube taste, but it's turning into more of my life and stuff. Um, so I hope you guys like, if you're still watching here, just like comment something, comment like the word cookie or something. I want to know if anyone's actually listening at this point, <laughs> but yeah. So, um, school, I saw, I didn't go to college and I focused on YouTube and there's like a lot of reasons like behind the scenes why I was able to do that. Um, I don't really want to go into it right now. Like the only time I'd ever go into this, those details, about like actual financial and actual income streams and stuff like that is if I was actually like leaving the community, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. So I don't really want to get into that right now, but, um, 
yeah, I basically chose not to go to college, and I'm very, ha- I'm very happy with my decision right now. I, I'm doing well for myself. A lot of people think we're like deadbeat or just like broke or just not doing anything with our lives, but I assure you, uh, we're doing well. So the people that think that usually just don't like actually understand the ranges of what you can do online, I guess, in this community. But yeah, besides the point. Um, so yeah, eventually, like I said, I was able to dedicate a lot of time to YouTube and really turn it into something else. So if there's anyone that is in the boat that I was in in high school where you have high school or you have YouTube as like one of your main things and you just want to, you want to really pursue it and you're a senior, I would suggest taking a gap year, hundred percent, use that year to see what you can turn YouTube in or into if you actually spend all your time on that. Cause I guarantee if you spend all your time on it or a significant more amount of time on YouTube or online business in general, you can make something for yourself and realize that you do not need college as a safety net to get a job that you're unhappy with in the long run. Because I always saw college as a safety net. Uh, that's what people do to get certification. The degree is what people actually pay for. The actual knowledge itself can all be accessed online through free courses, uh, free lectures through some of the smartest people in the world. You can learn anything online without professors, but the reason why people go to college is because they need the certification of the degree so that they can get a job outside of college. That's what that's how I see it. Uh, people probably disagree with that. People that want to go to college, stuff like that. But that's how I see it. There's also the experience, obviously. The experience of college is a whole different thing. That's like the social aspect. But I'm just talking about the actual like financial and occupational benefits of college. Is, is That's how as far as it goes, for in, at least in my eyes. And yeah, but a big reason I didn't go to college is because I knew that I wouldn't be happy after college or maybe even during college. That's that's one of my biggest things. Uh, regardless of money, regardless of whatever else is going on, what really matters is your happiness. And I took AP computer science uh, at the end of senior year, or I guess throughout senior year, because that's what I was going to major in. I was going to major in computer science. And I realized how, like, I was good at it. Like, I, I thought I was pretty good at it, but um, actually enjoying it, I did not enjoy it all. I knew that as soon as I got into college, I'd be miserable. After college, I'd probably get a job that wasn't even that great paying, maybe 60K out of college or something. I don't, I don't know how much that is, like 60 to 100 or something, depending on where you go, how good you do, what degree you are, uh, what school you go to. And I'd be unhappy, I'd be paying off student debt, and I just would not be enjoying that. So I would always support anyone, any person who comes to me, any of their friends that say they want to you know, focus on themselves and take their own route. But uh, not everyone's as able to do that as anyone else. There's a lot of other situations people have. Um, one parent's support is a big thing. I was very lucky to have my parents support me in my decision, but there's definitely people that are more strict than you have to go to college. You need to do this. You need to do that. So yeah, that's completely off topic, but I just wanted to explain a little bit why I didn't go to college, uh, why I was able to actually see how much time I could dedicate to YouTube and what it could do, why I'd recommend a gap year if you're a senior and you're actually able to, or if, if you actually see potential in yourself to do YouTube as a career or a job and uh, just basically how I see the world in terms of happiness and um, what the point of you know having a job is and stuff like that. It's not just about money, but it's about happiness. So if you're not happy with what you're doing, um, then you're always going to be miserable. And I think that's just something you can't that you can't sustain that healthily long term. So I just I just always keep that in mind, guys. That's like not even related to YouTube, but honestly, just your career path. Make sure you do what you're happy with. If you're not happy in college and you're not going to be happy doing whatever job you're majoring in. I would not recommend, I mean, I would just recommend against that. Like, how can you sustain being miserable and unhappy in your job for many years? But yeah, regardless, let's move more to the HCF community. I really just went over, so like I have a document on my left of like bullet points of what to do. So I have the intro, I did that. I did my life in YouTube, how I started YouTube, I went over that. Why I started YouTube, I did that. I went over high school, I uh, went over time dedication. I basically just like, yeah, like I said, I literally sat in my room for four years and grinded. So that's what I did. And I'm still grinding to this day, um, but it's a little bit different now. I don't really have a, a person or a, a school, and I guess, breathing down my neck, making sure I'm doing homework and stuff like that. But um, not going to college, I addressed that. And business, I guess, I didn't really address that yet. I'll probably put that down the line, but we're going to move on to actual. Oh, and I also did tips, unique and consistency and um, quality. So I, I did all that. So if you guys wanted to, you know, if you're skipping to this point for some reason and you wanted to hear anything of like that over, it all happened before this clip. So go ahead and go back. This is kind of like a podcast. I don't know. Podcasts are kind of cool. I might have to do that in the future, guys. You don't even know. Um, but anyways, HCF YouTube specifically. So I'm going to talk about a few things. Partnerships, server hopping, being money hungry, alternate game modes, and brand growth. So first things first, if you start YouTube, 
off these tips on something, you're, you're popping off. You're, you're doing good. Even getting just like 500 views a video, but you're consistent. 500 views a video is really good. I, like I said, I'm not dissing this at all. I'm saying 500 views a video consistently is very good in this community right now. Cause from there you will, you will take off. That's just how it is. But yeah, um, getting that amount of views will get you server partnership offers from very small servers in this community. And I'm just, I can't stress this enough. Back then in the day, it took me about two to three years, I think, before I actually partnered with the server and got paid off of it. Um, but I would not recommend partnering with a server just for money right now. You guys should focus on your brand growth. And once you get to a big enough point, the server that you play on for free right now, which I'm just gonna guess is most likely Viper, they will reach out to you for a partnership. That's what you should get to. I also wanna address right now, um, a lot of people think that only Tally gets partnered, which is my faction. I just want to point this out. This is not true. It's actually a backwards logic um, because what really happens is that these YouTubers that you know are doing well, um, I notice it, and a lot of the time I bring them into my faction. Like example, Lambo. I brought Lambo into our faction, and I kind of, I'm sure I've helped them a little bit here and there with YouTube, and you know I've I've helped them like get a little boost. And since then, I saw enough potential that he got partnered. But it's not that you need to be in Tally to get partnered. Like, I will happily partner anyone else that I see potential in. But the thing is, like, these people that are in my faction, they have direct access to me and, I guess, my advice in some aspect that it helps them grow to a point where they're so successful that we need to partner them. You know, like, HeyFu. HeyFu has always been seen as, li like, literally me, a mini me. Because I've seen um, years ago, or when I first met him, like, I noticed that he was different. I remember, this is a true story. I'm going to just say this now. I created a group chat with K Please and HeyFu. And I honestly wish I still had this old telegram. I don't anymore. I don't think hate does. I think Nick actually might. K please might have. So I'll ask him for it sometime down the line. But I made a group chat and I said, guys, I'm giving you guys both an opportunity. If you can stay consistent with me and put in the work, I will guarantee that you will be successful on YouTube. This is exactly what happened. And I taught, I tried teaching them everything I knew. I gave them all advice that I could. Um, I helped them with that aspect. And since then, um, and I, I said, there's just one thing, you can't give up on me. And then sadly, K please gave up on me. Um, he didn't give up on me, but he kind of gave up on the game, which I don't blame him. I mean, that's just, that's just, he had his own stuff going on, but he was doing well at the time being guys back then. K please was doing way better than Heifu, but uh, K please quit and Heifu stayed so consistent. Like even he was right after K please quit, Heifu like didn't blow up or anything, but um, he stayed consistent and eventually he started getting noticed and he's one of the top HDF YouTubers. I would say, he is top three, guys. I would say Heifu is top three HTF YouTubers right now, and I'm so proud of seeing him do that. Even the whole Valor situation, which was a very disappointing thing to, to hear about because um, no hate to anyone in the, the Valor team anymore. That's all resolved. Like, Valor is basically, I think it, yeah, it's basically done. Uh, Chase is back, Dylan's back, Hate's back. But um, yeah, that was, the, I always disagreed with Valor. It was, I'm just not gonna talk about it, but yeah, uh, regardless of that, I'm super proud of where he's like, who he's become as a person, uh, not just business wise, but, uh, just him as a person and him on YouTube. It was very, very nice to see that happen because I've always been offering anyone, all of my friends that if they want to be doing YouTube, I will help them do that. And he was like, other than Chase, cause Chase did this with me. I didn't like, I didn't like baby Chase up. Chase did this with me, me and him grew together. But when it came to hate, like he was someone that I took and I, I really tried helping. Um, and I've always offered this to anyone in my faction, my friends, that if they want my help, I will give it to them and I will try to get them to grow to the best they can. Um, so when that happened, uh, yeah, I, I just, I saw him grow. Um, it really just takes hard work and dedication. That's exactly what I've seen. Hey, he's been doing super well. And I think, honestly, think even though the value situation was a shame to hear about, uh, it definitely changed him a lot into a, a better person. He understands things now. And I don't even know why I'm talking about this. This is getting off topic, but I'm just saying, Tally, you don't need to be in Tally to get partnered on Viper. I'm speaking as a Viper owner right now, regardless of what else there is going on. If I see potential in you, you will get partnered. But there's some things that you need to understand. If if you accept a partnership at a, at a small server, and since you were partnered at Viper, you immediately start shit talking the brand at Viper. Uh, I apologize for my language. I'm not going to censor that like I normally would. But if you immediately start doing that, uh, you will most likely not get partnered because we notice things. We notice things like that. We don't necessarily dislike when people go to smaller servers, but we do note it. We note that, and then we note their 
I guess how they act about Viper after that. There's a lot of people that partner with smaller servers, but then they still play Viper on the side, which uh, I, I, I say that's good because, you know, they get the money from smaller servers because that might help them improve their setup, which improves their videos or just gives them more freedom with their content when you're actually getting paid and you're able to do things like that. Uh, maybe it allows you to quit your job and spend more time on YouTube, stuff like that. You never know someone's situation, so you can't judge them based on that, but I would definitely recommend to stay away from these smaller servers uh, that restrict you. Definitely, if you're restricted to your server, I would not recommend that because that will hinder your growth significantly. And I would just, I just gotta say, you gotta stick to the big servers that actually uh, these bigger YouTubers play on. So you have the chance of, you know, getting videos with them, uh, just more players because you'll get noticed more. Having YouTube rank on a server is great, um, but you gotta make sure it's the right server. Cause I know a lot of these servers, they bait a lot of these smaller YouTubers with under a thousand subs saying, oh, we'll give you partner. And then you think, oh, if I have partner on the server, I'm going to grow so much. But it's not really how it works. You need to really stay focused on the actual good opportunities and do not get lured in by money easily. These people, uh, these server owners, no disrespect or anything. I mean, they're business people, so I understand this. But they will try to secure these big YouTube or these, sorry, these small YouTubers before they have the potential to blow up. And they want to ride that success up for the same price or whatever. So you just need to be careful uh, where you go. I would honestly, all my, my friends, I always recommend them just to not partner um, with smaller servers, but you can do whatever you want based on whatever you need for your livelihood. So I would not like, I would not completely disrespect it, but I would just say, I recommend against it. I say, stay to Viper. Um, I'm not just saying this is the Viper owner actually, but I'm saying this because I went through the same thing. I stayed to my interview and then I eventually partnered with Velt and then I basically became owner on there through like three years of experience or two years of experience. I don't even know. And then I eventually left and made Viper again. We reopened Viper. But um, yeah, you partnering with smaller servers that restrict you can hinder your growth. Um, but doing it like once or twice a week, not too bad. I mean, some people get money off that and that's good. But just be careful, guys. Don't let money be your focus because if it is, you're going to find yourself unhappy playing on an inactive server or not as active server as what you could be playing on uh you could have limited content it could just be a bad server quality in general i don't know what I, like in specifics because I, like as i said i've never played one of these smaller servers but i know how they are and you also need to be careful because a lot of these smaller servers have like shady owners like i don't know anyone specifically i'm not i'm not even saying that anyone i know is shady because I, I don't but i know that there has been experiences of scamming um i guess just dis, not disloyalty but dishonesty uh, I guess luring in with certain numbers, you're promising things, not prom not giving them. You just don't want to get screwed over by the wrong person uh, in this community when it comes to partnerships and YouTube and stuff like that. You just need to really be careful where you are and who you are, and um, you can find the right place somewhere else. But I would always recommend the biggest server is the best place to be, and you got to know like which ones the actual real player servers and which ones are being spoofed. I'm not going to call anyone out specifically, but you should be able to tell who's spoofing and who is not spoofing and play on the good server that has the most players, the biggest YouTubers, um, the most chance for recognition. And even Viper has very, very minimal requirements for YouTube rank, famous rank, streamer rank. You can get that with just a little bit of work, guys. So I would always recommend Viper is the best place to grow. And I'm sure that any one of these partners can guarantee that because we don't just hand out partner rank like a lot of the other servers. I've seen like a server have like 30 partners and I, I've never even like, I didn't even know any of the partners, but like, People that hand out that, that kind of diminishes the rank of being a partner because being a partner in Viper will lead to pretty significant growth. That's like kind of a fact. It's not like a not like a bragging thing, but it is a fact that when everyone, all these recent partners, if you check the social blades, they instantly start growing after they get partnered, like very hard. Like even hate when he repartnered, guys, his channel started blowing again. And that's just, I mean, that's just how it is. But yeah, don't get lured in by partnerships. If you do plan to partner, just don't be restricted. If you're restricted, that'll hinder your ability to grow almost 100% of the way. You will probably not ever, ever grow to a really high potential if you're limited to one server. It's got to be careful with that. Um, the next thing is server hopping. If you are a YouTuber and you server hop constantly, it's going to diminish your credibility, your influence to actually have like proper influence on if like you ever actually want your influence to bring players. It's going to diminish that. Um, just server hopping just looks bad on you in general. One, if you bring fans to a server, they buy a rank and then you switch to another server that you that fan may, you might actually lose that fan. Uh, the fan will never follow you again, or they'll be stuck at that server. And they don't want to play it anymore or something like that. So there, there's that server hopping is never good. Not even for your, yourself, your brand, your fans, or your potential or growing, um, being money hungry. I already basically addressed this. You never want to make money oriented decisions. It will always lead to bad things. All you want to do 
focus on your happiness. You focus on the happiness and the potential of growing on YouTube and everything else will come. Uh, that, that's just how it is. No matter what you do, money hungry and being like uh, just server hopping will never lead to good things. But if you focus on what matters, then everything else will come by default. Like it'll come naturally to you. That's just how it is. Like the law of attraction. That's basically how it is. Alternate game modes. This is just something I want to briefly touch on. Uh, doing prison skyblock factions. Those little things like on the side, like one a week for to for other income sources or stuff like that for partnerships um, is good. I recommend that. I think that's a good thing, especially if, if you don't upload every day, but you keep your HCF schedule of like every other day, but then you fit in in between those videos, alternate game modes. That will allow you to not have to worry about getting an HCF partnership, but you can get an alternate game mode partnership so that you can fund your channel to keep going without having to actually jeopardize your HCF content, which is your main thing always would suggest that if you have the ability to um, take advantage of those opportunities you have if you are a, par a YouTuber right now and you get offered a partnership in another game mode, just make sure you don't get scammed or you don't get let in on in anything and it's like a legitimate business or brand or server. But yeah, uh, then brand growth, I basically just suggest on this, all this helps your brand grow. Um, partnering with big servers helps you. Being a YouTuber, streamer, or a famous rank on a big server helps you significantly and just being like a positive I guess looked on positively by other YouTubers in the community. If you're looked on to like a server hopper, uh, you kind of just lose respect in that aspect. And it's just not something you want to do for the long term or longevity of your YouTube channel, I guess I'd say. But yeah, to talk more about like positive brand recognition, I would just say if you guys can be as respectful as possible as a YouTuber, just try not to have problems with anyone. If you have problems with people, it's just going to lead to annoying problems down the line. You never want to like... I, I know this is hypocritical because I mean, I'm not saying I don't trash talk people or I have trash talk people in the past. I mean, I have, I definitely have. I don't, I try not to, but I, I have in the past. I'm sure like everyone has at least once. Uh, there's always been this like small little beef things on Twitter. Those happen, but I always recommend to stay away from it. Um, just having it, it looks bad on you, your brand. And if you have problems with other people, you never know what opportunities you're limiting yourself by having problems with them. You know, that just happens. Like if, if one day you're just destroying you're completely just trash talking viper after you get partnered on another server that's just going to limit your your opportunities at viper 100 percent. they're not going to forget that that's just how it is um that's definitely a real thing so yeah i, I talked a lot about that so i'm just going to move on to the community i guess in general uh hcf is a somewhat small community so going into it on youtube you need to know that you're pretty much capped at a certain point like i i haven't seen in this era uh, anyone average over 10k views in a long time uh, i'm still averaging about 10k or more in my videos but i think that's basically it i used to be averaging like 20 to 30k i think earlier this year or last year uh, which was really good at the time um, but i've never really you don't really see many people averaging high views in here you never really see anyone get over the 100k mark that super far i think i actually recently passed old alex and i also passed painful so i think it really just goes uh, Stimpy, which doesn't really do HCF anymore, and then me. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I might be wrong, but I think that's what it is, at least for HCF Let's Players or people that have done HCF Let's Plays. I think that's what the ranking is right now. And guys, I'm growing. I'm not going to lie. I'm growing extremely slow, but every single view that I get and like and comment that I get is super important. And, you know, I'm so appreciative of it. I don't really, I don't mind that I'm not growing. That's why I have my second channel that has like unlimited potential, you know, in other games. Um, and I know I haven't uploaded in there in a while. I've been really busy, but I'm going to, I promise. But uh, yeah, so just know when you're going into HGF, it is a limited community, but you never know what can happen. HGF could blow up one day. This is a very fun game mode in my eyes. I think it's one of the best in 1.8, 1.7 PvP, and I think it can blow up. I still think it can. And I honestly think that the community is getting less toxic as it used to be. So I think that's good to see. There's a lot of positive potential with the community. And honestly, um, with the whole lockdown, that actually helped the game mode a lot. Uh, I know it's a bad time, but it, it did help the game mode. When more people were inside, a lot of people were on Viper, and it actually uh, helped bring back the game mode a little bit, gave it a kickstart. But I mean, I'm sure every everything digitally got better uh, because everyone's on their computers, everyone's staying home. But yeah, so um, that's just how it is right now. So just know that going into the community, but um, if you are wanting to do stuff outside of the community, I mean, I obviously don't have experience with Hypixel YouTube or what works on there. I just like, I really know about HF YouTube and like consistency with that. But I know like Hypixel YouTubers, they spend a lot of time editing their videos and they also don't upload like super frequently, like once a week maybe. 
Uh, and they're also all unique in their own ways. So you can you can see the similarities in the tips I gave, but you will actually notice a big difference when it comes to upload schedules and like actually editing styles. Like editing styles in HDF is very laid back. At least that's what it is right now. Maybe someone can come back or come and bring a really big, like, you know, interactive editing style, something you're not seeing ever, and they make it like a Hypixel YouTuber. But the thing is, if you're going to put in that effort um, with editing, I would definitely recommend Hypixel if you enjoy it. Only if you enjoy it. If you, I don't want to force it, but... Uh, high pixel has so much potential I mean, it always has and uh, yeah so I touched up on a lot of topics guys and I went all over the place in this video I is I'm at the 44 minute mark guys I was not expecting this I will tell you I was not expecting this at all I recorded 20 minutes of practice okay so I'm gonna have to go record more or something and I'm gonna have to put something in the background but yeah basically um, I hope I, you know, gave some insight here and there on not only my life, but YouTube tips, why I started like YouTube, how you can start YouTube, how you can grow on YouTube and just, um, some recommendations in the HGF YouTube uh, community. Cause that, I guess that's obviously what I'm most experienced with. So yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I know I went all over the place, like I said, so I might not have touched on some topics that I wanted to, but I definitely want to. Uh, help people out if they if they want to like I said when I, if any of my friends want help with YouTube I will always help them 100% of the time and I'll make sure that they succeed if they put in the right work because there's no way you can't succeed if you put in the work consistently if you stay determined and you just put in the time and the dedication there's just no way you can't grow it's just how it is so yeah guys I'm not gonna get this any longer I'm just gonna end this off here leave any comments down below if you have questions subscribe to the channel like the video if you learned something and I hope you guys you know had some insight in this video and I, you know, I hope it's enjoyable to listen to you. And I apologize if there's any pauses in this video. Like I said, I'm not even going to re-look at this video. I'm literally, or sorry, I'm not going to re-record this audio. I'm literally recording this on Audacity. I'm just going to cut it. 45 minutes is a long time to review, so I'm not going to do it. So I uh, hope, hope that's okay. But yeah, guys, that's going to be all. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys, uh, I think actually today, on Start of the World 6 p.m. EST on Infernal. So I'll see you guys there. All right, guys. Peace.